too fast, it's, it's recorded, so you can always go back and check, right? Okay, so the first question is uh, deals with chapter three, trigonometry. So we we have to read and interpret, and and this involves compass directions, right? So the start at the start we we are at uh, we're going south 35 degrees west, right? So we're gonna go remember north, south, east, west, right? So we're gonna go southwest like this. So I'm gonna start somewhere over here. I want to have enough room to do my work, right? So this is basically my starting point. That's point A. So south, 35 west, that means that I'm going in this direction. So 35 goes in there, okay? Um, until it reaches a spot he likes, which is point B. Right, and marks it on the GPS, continues on its expedition north, 19 degrees west. So from here, okay, from here we're, we're going to start north and then turn 19 degrees west. So the 19 is actually inside the triangle we're building, okay, uh, for 3.8 kilometers. So we know that this is 3.8 kilometers here. And then uh, the second spot, point C on its GPS, the distance from the second spot. So this would be C. And remember, I don't line it up with where I started. I do that on purpose. So basically, I'm, I'm, this is my resulting triangle right here. This is 3.8 and the second spot is 4.7 kilometers from the car. Right, this is where my car is, which is point A, travels at only direction given to point B, and then we're given direction and distance to point C and distance for this stretch here. So <clears throat> what I want to see here is when you interpret that, you can translate that over to 35 here. Okay, and then we can technically just quickly sketch a new triangle. Whoa, what happened there? Let's try it again. Right, something like this has been created. Right, this is A, B, and C. This is 3.8. This is 4.7. The 35 doesn't make it into the triangle. But the combination of these two at point B, they add up to 54 degrees. So that'd be very important to me to see that 54 there. We want to know the total distance traveled. You should realize that I do have a pair here. Okay. So that indicates that I have to use sine law. So I'm going to start here with sine of 54 over 4.7. And the only thing that I can solve for is angle A here. Um, and then in turn, I will find angle C, which will help me find this distance to then be able to figure out the total distance traveled, right? So I'm going to go sine of A over 3.8. And so sine of A, make sure you show your work. Oh, and I also um, want to reiterate, your calculator should be set to degrees, not radians. So at the top of your screen, sometimes I don't, I don't understand how this happens, but sometimes that's set to radians, that's wrong, right? So it has to be set to degrees. So you got to go mode and make sure you set, set it to uh, degrees, so 4.7, like that, and then the next step would be A, right, angle A is sine inverse, and I will speed it up a little bit, of 0 0.654 dot dot dot, right, angle A is 40.85 degrees, important to me, so I'll underline, and I'm going to run out of room, I see that already, so I'll move over here, now that I have A, 
I can find angle C. So 180 minus 54 minus 40.85. Angle C is 85.15. Also important to me. And so now I can use sine law again and use this angle that is known to me to find this distance. So side C, essentially. I will go uh, and, and use cosine law there because I want you to see both here. Because at this point, I have side angle side here, which will allow me to find side C on this end. Allow me to do that over here. C squared is going to be 3.8 squared plus 4.7 squared minus 2 times 3.8 times 4.7 times cosine of C, which is 85.15. C is square root, right? You type all of this in and you get uh, 33. 0.509 dot 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 right that is 5.79 kilometers so also important to me but doesn't answer the question just yet so let's let's box this off here total distance would be 3.8 4.7 and this is um, 5.79 here at the end. So that would be 9.59. Why do I have 9.59? Doesn't make sense. It's more. 14? 14.29? Okay. That is your final answer. So always read the question and make sure you answer what it's asking. So of course, I did have a lot of components here. And some of you may have used sine law to solve for C, and that's fine. I just wanted to let you see cosine law as well and how I did that. Because you need to know both, right? There's only one to start. Once you find information, then you can branch off to whichever law you want but you need to pick one to start. That's the, that's the key there. All right, so if you didn't write this all down, at least write down 1429 so you can backtrack, right? Then we have chapter seven. I don't know if you recognize that. Remember your four types, zero, one, two, three? This is the story, right? Uh, where you're given a story and you come up. Uh, so. Chip is camping at Tolby Falls, decides to go cliff diving from the highest spot, which is 20 feet above water. Hint, hint, right? Starting point. Since he jumps up just before leaving the top of the cliff, he reaches a maximum height of, like there's the height and the time that it happens. Determine the quadratic equation that models the height over time include at least three points. So for A, we're going to do that. It's just a sketch, time and height. So we don't need to have units or anything like that. We're not starting on the ground. We're starting here. And we're jumping off like this. And then hitting the water, right? Um, so we're told that this initial height is 20 feet. So at time zero, you're at a height of 20 feet. So that's 0, 20 then our maximum height is 0 0.8224 and how are we going to do this biggest mistake times two and then we go here it's the biggest mistake i see so don't do that you got to kind of have right you've got to be in line where you started and get this point so that's 20 we take this, we have to multiply it by 2 in this case. If I give you that other height, you have to divide by 2 to get to the maximum height. And that is 1.64, sorry. 
that that is really worth one full mark if you have that. So you set them up. 0 0.20, 0 0.82, 24, and 1.64, 20. Right, your X and your Y, or your height and your, you have that, you put this in L1, L2, show work, second trace, five, right? You come up with, uh, should I say something here about graphing it? I think you should remember all of this. This this yellow this yellow review, if you do this, you're gonna be in very good shape. So I really encourage you to do that. So you get negative 5.959 x squared plus 9.756 x plus 20. Oops. This is what I'm after there, right? That would be the equation for this, that models this scenario. Okay. Got it? B. How high is chip after 1.8 seconds? Second trace one. X is equal to 1.8 because I know my time. And the height is is 18.29. Uh, and we're in feet, right? What is the domain? What's the domain of this situation? Why not range? Why didn't I ask for range? Anyways. We go from zero to, this is where the action ends, right? Because this is modeling the, the path of the jump, right? Once you enter the water, it kind of, it's a different scenario, right? So we need to figure this out. So y2 is equal to zero, second, trace five, right? To get the x-intercept. And we get zero, no, 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 wrong. 2.83, right? At 2.83, I get a height of zero. So that means that if I go back up here, right, that is when I'm hitting the water. So time goes from time zero to 2.83. Let's just do range for fun, right? Just for fun. Because you do hit the, you do end up in, at a height of zero above the ground, all the way to the highest of 24. Okay. Next page. What else could I have done here? Uh, so back to this question, just like how how long did. Uh, was chip at a height of 21 feet or greater, right? Remember those questions where you need to have, when you need to draw your 21 foot and then time one, time two, and you subtract them to find out how much you spend above it. So watch out for that. Watch out for under underwater, right? Uh, questions that have underwater, like a pelican diving, right? Or the other way around. Um, and so just read carefully. If you read carefully, it should give you everything you need to answer. All right, question three. This is chapter two. So you have a parallelogram. What does that mean? Parallelogram, right? That's telling you it's a slanted rectangle. These are parallel. These are parallel. That's what that is saying. Okay, so we're, we're, we know, therefore, without putting the marks on here, just by reading that, okay, you know that the, the following are parallel. Okay, so determine the following. And remember, in parallel lines are like this. You have this zigzag. These are all my cool highlighters come in handy, right? Right, so this transfers over 86 goes over here, right? 
So I'm going to use 86 degrees and I will just say that alternate, sorry, alternate interior angles are congruent. And be, be ready for only using one property at a time. And so now I can do, so I did this one first. I'm looking at A here because I see a triangle. I will do A next. So did I actually use that? Yes. I'm just going to go 180. I'm just going to show my work here. Minus 86, minus 58. And you get 30. Nope. Sorry, guys. Am I nervous or what? I'm losing sleep too. Here. I'm finding A, so A is over here. Let's try this again. So A is 36 degrees. Okay, and so I will say that I use the sum of a triangle is equal to 180 property there. And so I show a little bit of work with it. So I found this. Um, next, I'm going to find Z. And if you see that, there's a straight line right here. And there are one, two, three angles along it. But we know they have to add up to 180. Okay, so that's the third one that I'm going to do. And I'm going to go 180 minus 86, this one, minus A. And that will give me that answer. So let's try that again. 180 minus 86 minus A, which is 36. And that is 58. And I will go straight angle. Right, that's my property that I'm using there. Straight angle property. And so we put 58 here to do that. And why? How will I do why? Alternate interior with this, right? But I've already used it. What are these two here? Do you remember the name? Consecutive interior. What do consecutive interior angles add up to? 180. Okay. So I can still say that all of these angles, these three angles, should all add up to 180. So I'm going to go 180 minus 58 minus x, which I already know. So this is just showing the work again. x is 86. And y is 36 degrees. And I will just say consecutive interior angles add up to 180 or are supplementary or even if you just put consecutive interior angles I would have given you the marks there so this is the fourth angle I found some of you probably did it differently and it was probably easier but uh, I will just highlight the fact that right, I use that I use this consecutive and alternate interior I use different strategies different properties to get me there what are we doing time-wise? 320, you're going, right? A lot of you? Okay. <clears throat> I will skip this for now and go to 5. Solve the triangle means solve all sides, all angles. What, tri what type of triangle is this? SAS, right? SAS. Some of you are like SOS, right? Get me out of here. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, it's SAS, right? So that's cosine law. And I know that I'm going to need a lot of room, so I'm going to, to find side F squared, right? Just go 105.7 squared plus 78.9 squared minus, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Let's try it again. I just can't. Oh. 
I can do it. There you go. F is square root of one uh, ten thousand three forty eight point six five five and so forth. So side F is one hundred one point seven three meters. So that's your starting point. It's part of my answer, so I'll box it in. Um, and so now you know that this is 101.73. You technically have a pair, so I'm going to jump over to sine law, sine of 65 over 101.73. And you pick which angle you want to solve for. What did I solve for on my key? I solved for D. So sine of D over 78.9. And then angle D ends up being 4466. You can't do this on a test, okay? Only I can do it. Because I need time, okay? Angle E is therefore just subtracting these two from 180. So it's 70.34 sum of triangle. And there is that. Uh, for this, for question four, you count the number of sides of that polygon and you have 12 sides. So solve for x first, that's the interior angle, right? Which is n minus 2 times 180 over n, so that would be 150 degrees. Something, okay, y is 45 and z is 30. Okay. Um, just to, just to make sure you understand, chapter four in this booklet, don't do it, okay? Chapter four is further back. It's uh, page 20 and 21, okay? So don't do pages 20 to 21. Everything else you can do. So remember those chapters that we're preparing for. Chapter seven is the most important one. Quadratics, focus on quadratics. Then uh, do chapter three, trigonometry. And chapter two is the like an order of importance, right? You wanna make sure chapter seven is the one you're most prepared for, okay?